Hi there, and welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and I get to be here today with Jen M. Watson, who is a wife, mom, writer, published author, blogger, and vlogger. She's a motivational speaker, preacher, and CEO. She does it all. And on top of all of that, she's the prayer director for Black Christian Influencers. So um, she's deeply committed to women's empowerment and foreign missions. She's begun to dedicate her life to the elevation of vulnerable women and youth, both in the diaspora and West Africa. So I'm really excited to have you here, Jen. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Jamie. I'm excited too. So for all of our interviews, we always start off with the same question. What mm -hmm. is your favorite prayer closet? Uh, believe it or not, it is actually my bedroom closet. So you uh, literally have a prayer closet. I love right. that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a literal closet that I use. And even though, of course, I'll pray anywhere in the house, it's just, um, I think it's also because I sometimes will put like um, little post-it notes up or I may write something that comes to me on the little um dry hanging like dry erase board that I have on the wall in there and so it's convenient because I like to sometimes stop and write down what I hear from God in prayer um so yeah I just I, I love spending time in there I love it so my co-host Alana and I have talked before about like what is our ideal prayer closet or if we could if we could arrange the ideal prayer room, what it would be like. And I think it'd be really neat to have a literal closet devoted to that. And I don't have that right now, but actually I'm recording in a closet in my room. This is my like air oh. quote podcast studio is actually a literal closet. So you could call this my prayer closet. There's not a lot of room. Right. Like I can literally touch both sides here with my elbows. So <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, can you tell us about yourself? Tell us about your family and just, you do so many things. I mean, I don't even know where to start, but just tell us a little bit about your family and what you do. Um, sure. Uh, I am actually married to my husband, Mark. It'll be 13 years in June. So I have, uh, he's also a senior pastor. So that is enough, of course, to keep me on my toes. Um, but I also have a daughter who is eight and a son who is five. And uh, I just really enjoy, I think a lot of the simple things in life. So I enjoy spending time with them. I enjoy baking. I enjoy, um, you know, watching movies. Uh, so that's a little bit about me in terms of my family and the things that I like to do. But yes, I'm also heavily involved in foreign missions. So for the past three or four years now, with the help of sponsors, I've actually been sending eight children to school in Liberia uh, every school year, which is something that I'm super passionate about. And, you know, I guess we'll probably get more into it later, but I'm also now moving into Nigeria, West Africa, just helping underprivileged uh, women and children who need a chance at an education or uh, starting a small business. So, you know, I'm passionate, of course, about prayer, but I'm very passionate about women's empowerment and, and education as well. Well, yeah. And one of the big topics that we're going to talk about today that you said you're really passionate about is this balance between prayer and action. Because mm -hmm. I think as Christian women, you know, a lot of us are very action oriented, but I think sometimes we can hide behind prayer. I think there's always that balance. Yes. We can either hide yes. behind prayer and say, well, I can pray about this. And we feel like that removes our responsibility to move forward with action. Exactly. And then we can err on the other side of just plowing forward with our, you know, just physical doing things without right. remembering to make prayer that backbone. So there's a real balancing act. So I love this. I love this topic and I'm excited yeah. to talk about it with you today. Yes, absolutely. So what do you, first of all, what, so what directed you to West Africa and doing this work with missions? What was that, um, what was the catalyst that led you there? Well, about five years ago, I had the opportunity to become friends with a couple who uh, is from Liberia. They were living in the United States for some time while the husband was pursuing his master's degree. And he would always talk to us about a lot of the trials that women face, especially 
in his country. And I said to him, you know, well, is there something I could do to help? And he said, you know, a lot of them just need basic needs met, such as having access to a toothbrush, having access to toothpaste, um, feminine hygiene products. So I got a lot of people together and I said, hey, let's donate to this cause. Let's purchase items. And we were able to send over uh, two barrels worth of items for women and he challenged me one day because you know I sent the barrels we prayed over them and I felt like wow this is great you know we sent the barrels we said a prayer this is awesome and to be honest with you I kind of thought it maybe was going to stay at that level but he challenged me one day and said you know Jen I want you to dig a little bit deeper and I want you to pray about asking God how else can you help because he said this was a great start but in all honesty, once they've gone through their toothbrushes and their toothpaste is gone, what do they have? They need something lasting. And I said, oh my goodness, I, you know, I said, okay, I think God is really challenging me here and is testing me to see, am I going to just hide behind that prayer and saying, hey, I'm praying for them that everything will be great and that something will turn in their lives? Or am I going to step up to the plate and along with my prayer, add action? So as I prayed about it, God said, why don't you send as many children to school as you can? And so my initial goal was five. We were able to get up to eight, but that's really what got the ball rolling. And when I really started understanding that God was pleased about the fact that I enjoyed prayer and wanted to pray, but he was also saying to me, but go a little bit deeper. And uh, that's really what started the work in West Africa. And then over time, God just led me to Nigeria as well. And doors have started to open there. So it literally started with sending barrels of hygiene products to Liberia. And now it's just uh, evolved into something much bigger that is beyond me, really. Wow, that is a good story. And just the fact that even doing a little bit of of practical work is kind of, you know, I think we can hide behind that too. Like let's do a token effort, make ourselves feel good. Yes. And I'm not, and not to diminish any token effort, whether it's packing a shoebox for Samaritan's right. purse or, you know, those are amazing. And those are huge, you know, that's a good thing. Right. But I love that challenge of going to God with these things that we're passionate about or, or prayer burdens that we have. Because I right. think the more we pray and the more we're open to, to God's leading, I really think those prayers and those passions almost always are going to, if we take them to God, they almost always end up manifesting in some kind of action. I don't think we can be passionate about things and be satisfied with just praying. I think there's always going to be something else that might come out of it. So Yes, absolutely. So what is, do you have some kind of, um, do you have a website for that specific ministry that you're doing? Yes. Now what's interesting, Jamie, is the way I support the Nigeria missions is through a body scrub line. So I make brown sugar body scrubs um, at my house and the proceeds from those sales, like every single sale. Uh, a portion of the proceeds is reserved for uh, the vulnerable uh, women and children in Nigeria, West Africa. So that website is actually mygracedavid.com. Uh, and Grace David, people often ask where those two names come from. Those are the middle names of my children. So uh, yes, mygracedavid.com and people are able to purchase a product knowing that, yeah, you're getting a great homemade uh, body scrub, but ultimately you're helping me lift another woman or a child. That is really neat. Are your kids ever involved in making the body scrubs or is this just, is it something kind of dedicated to them or, or is it something you could see them being involved in? I could definitely see my daughter being involved in it as she gets older, she seems to be fascinated by the fact that mom has body scrubs, but I've already started explaining to her that it's not just for my own mm -hmm. personal profit, but we're doing this to help children who may not have a chance at an education 
as easily as you do. And so as she's getting older and I've explained that to her, you can kind of see that the light bulb is starting to go off. And so I hope that as she continues to grow in maturity, but even in God, that it would be something she'd want to be involved in. That is really neat. And just to have that as kind of their namesake, that's a really neat legacy to leave them right. just, just to, to, for them to be aware that, mm -hmm. you know, the way we have it isn't the way everybody has it. So right. That's really neat. So the way that I found you is actually through Black Christian Influencers. I follow Black Christian Influencers on Instagram and saw that you are the prayer director there. Yes. And so I'm really interested to know about what you're doing there. And if you could tell us a little bit about BCI and because yeah. frankly, as a podcaster, when I'm looking for people to interview and I do a Google search, a lot of white faces pop up. And mm -hmm. I wanted to find some diversity and I love BCI. I just love the, yes. the posts. And so tell us about the mission there and what you do as the prayer director. Sure. So BCI, uh, which was founded by Jacqueline Horbrook, is all about uh, black Christians that are involved in ministry, but also the marketplace mm -hmm. coming together and uh, really uplifting each other. Uh, it's interesting what you said, Jamie, and it's true that in certain arenas, a lot of times you may see a lot of white faces and BCI is all about, well, how can we help each other become more visible? How can we support each other? And that's what I love about the platform. It's not really about uh, let me just promote my product and everyone supports me, but there's really this sense of community. How can we build the kingdom together? And how can we come together to help promote even diversity in the kingdom and in the marketplace? And so in terms of becoming the prayer director for BCI, you know, when I first joined and Jackie invited me to be a member, I thought I was just going to be a member and network and kind of go with the flow that way. Uh, but one Wednesday morning, she said, hey, I'm not feeling too well. Can you lead the prayer that we have on Wednesday mornings? And I said, sure. So I led the prayer. And when the call ended, she immediately sent me this text message. And she's like, you know, I think you're the answer to a prayer that I've been praying. She said, I feel like it, I've got so much going on that I can't be as dedicated to the Wednesday morning prayer calls as I want to be. And I asked God to just send me someone that was passionate about prayer. And uh, she said, and I think that person is you. So what do you think? And I said, well, no pun intended. I'd like to pray about it. So <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I have so much going on, Jamie, that I think at first I wanted to hide behind that and mm -hmm. say, God, you know, I could pray for BCI, but to take on this responsibility, I don't know. And it's, I, I couldn't shake the nudge of the Holy Spirit. And so I said, sure, I'll take it on. And so I lead the prayer calls on Wednesday mornings uh, via the BCI Instagram page. But I also have started uh, Tuesday afternoon teachings um, every first Tuesday of the month. And my role as the prayer director for BCI is getting people excited about prayer and allowing people to know just how necessary it is. I think for a lot of us as Christians, it's easy sometimes to pray those quick prayers. We just kind of want to get it over with or be able to check it off of our to-do list for the day. But there's something to be said to some, uh, for someone who really dedicates their life um, to prayer. And so I believe that that's part of my role as prayer director is to just get people excited about prayer. I think a lot of people see it as a chore. I think so too. And how long have you been doing this? How long have you been the prayer director? So my position actually just started in January of this year. So just a few months. Yeah. So how have you seen, have you seen evidence of, of growth in people personally or like, what have you seen as you've been part of this? What is your, have you seen this ministry growing since you've become part of it? 
Well, I've definitely seen more engagement as it relates to the uh, early morning prayer calls. So what I mean is, you know, the first couple of times I went on, I felt like you could see the little number that people were there, but there wasn't much interaction and you're like, oh my gosh. But now people are putting in prayer requests. People are handing in testimonies of, oh my goodness, you know, BCI came together and prayed that I would do well on an exam and I did well, or that my doors would open for my business. So I think that's the growth that I've seen even in a short amount of time is just people just pouring in testimonies, which is a, a big deal. And uh, I'm just hoping that as time goes on, we'll just see those numbers rise for people that are willing to get up early in the morning when it's still dark outside and say, yes, I want to join, you know, my brothers and sisters in prayer. I love that. And, you know, that's the power of community. And I think that's, I think isolation is where the enemy can get us. And I think sometimes we picture, I don't know, you picture prayer life life as being, you know, you have to sit in a chair by yourself with your Bible open and your hands folded all alone, everything quiet. Mm -hmm. And, and we lose the sense of relationship. It becomes a chore. It becomes a thing you check off your box. And when you, you know, aside from all of the creative ways you can pray alone, right. community is so important. And I just love that you're seeing more engagement. And I think that people, it's, you know, with the online um, world evolving now to the point where, where it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. Right. I, I think people maybe aren't quite used to engaging in that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of neat to see that, you know, I think as people get used to engaging on a vir in a, in virtual communities, maybe it becomes easier and easier to, to become vulnerable and, and to share. Right. Um, have you seen more engagement since this whole crazy COVID-19 crisis? I don't even know where you are right now. Where are you located? I'm in uh, North Carolina. Okay. I'm at, we have family on the East Coast in, in North Carolina, actually. Oh, okay. So are your, are your kids home from school or is our school still? Okay. So your kids are home from yes. school. Kids are home from school uh, across the state. Uh, the governor just recently asked for schools to remain closed until uh, mid-May. Yeah, that's so. kind of where we're at too. I'm in Anchorage, Alaska, and we're sort of, I think, beginning of May right now with the thought that they'll probably extend it. Right. Um, have you seen an increase in engagement now that people are stuck at home or has it been, has there maybe been more distraction since? Um, have you, seen you know, I now? actually think there have certainly, there's certainly been more engagement even as it relates to transparency meaning that people are now coming forward and saying, you know what, I have a family member that's affected by COVID mm -hmm. and I really need prayer or I need to be able to talk to someone and express how that's making me feel. I'm frustrated. So I would definitely say there's actually been maybe a little bit more transparency just with people understanding that, hey, I need someone to join me in prayer. So I've kind of got to speak up about what's going on in my life. So uh, yes, definitely more engagement. Yeah, no, and I think that's one of the silver linings of this tough time is, can you imagine going through this in a world where we didn't have this kind of connection? I mean, right. I just, I can't imagine. I just, I love the fact that church services are going out virtually. Mm -hmm. And I think probably people that would never think to watch a church service are, are getting right. to hear the gospel through these kinds of things. Right, definitely. Well, so let me ask you about just your prayer life in general. Like, do you think how, how do you have any examples of just, um, you know, how has prayer become a passion for you? What are the things in your life that have kind of made you passionate about prayer or ways that you've seen God show up in different, different areas of your life? Sure. I can first tell you, Jamie, that I used to be one of those people that felt like prayer was a chore and I didn't enjoy it. But a couple of years ago, seemingly out of nowhere, but I guess it's not out of nowhere, uh, I had some close friends of mine uh, lose their oldest sister uh, unexpectedly, and I said, you know, I'm going to pray for them uh, during this time, being for, there for them physically, of course, but I also wanted to really pray for them. And uh, I really started praying for them earnestly 
And I noticed and realized that over time, uh, God used me wanting to support them in prayer to really just call me to prayer more often than maybe I was recognizing at first or feeling. And so I think what made me start to become passionate about prayer is when I started to see results from fervent prayer, from uh, praying certain prayers that you refuse to let up on until you receive an answer, even if it's not the answer you want. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when I started being passionate because I'm like, oh my goodness. And I was born and raised in church, but it's like the light bulb went off. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this thing really does work um, when you are consistent. And so I think also just starting to hear God speak to me about my life specifically made me passionate about prayer because it made me say, you know what I tell people all the time, Jamie, I always say prayer is an opportunity for us to pick God's brain. Hmm, I love and that. yeah, and I started realizing that a lot of the questions that I had, I didn't have to guess. God had the answer. He was waiting for me to just spend time with him. Hmm. So even my purpose in women's empowerment and foreign missions, I mean, I realized that through prayer. And I think I could have easily been doing things in life right now that may not have been bad things, but perhaps they just weren't, wouldn't have been part of my destiny or part of my purpose. So I've seen the answers to specific prayers. I have seen uh, the ability to hear from God for myself and understand what my purpose is, what my passion is. And I think that's how I really started becoming passionate about prayer is just realizing that this whole new world opened up to me. I think that is, I think that's always the way that, I don't know, for me, it, it's just the same thing where it was when mm -hmm. I started to see answers to prayer. For me, it was when I started journaling because mm -hmm. I would journal my prayers and, and I would go back and read them. And it was things that I didn't even remember praying for. And when yeah. I would go back and read those things, I thought, Oh my goodness, God answered that so specifically. And I don't right. even remember praying for that. And so I think it is, but sometimes you have to do the time. And like, in your case, it was just this commitment to intercede for your friends that needed you that right. kept you on your knees. But I think there is this, it's like exercise, you know, um, You've got to do the time before you can really see the benefits. And so you can, you know, sometimes if you do just put in the discipline, mm -hmm. then you get this reward of connecting with God. And I think that's what then drives us more and more. And yeah. that's, yeah, what a, I love that. Okay. So I want to get it right. So it's prayer is our opportunity to pick God's brain. Yes. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to write that down because I think that's really neat because we forget to be still and mm -hmm. receive. And I think that is, yeah, that's such an important part of it is to listen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what are, um, so what are some of the other things that you're involved in? Like, I know you do some writing. I know you've published books. I know you do some ghost writing. So what other kinds of things are you involved in? Yes. So I started, uh, I would say early last year, ghost blogging for people okay. uh, because there were people that said, hey, I have a company or a brand and it needs a consistent blog, but I either hate writing or I just don't have time to write. Uh, and so that's how my ghost writing started. But October of 2019, one of my clients said, I have a friend who has a compelling story that needs to get out but he just doesn't feel like he has the skill set to write a book. And she said, I know you've uh, published two of your own books. Would you be interested in ghostwriting a book for him? And I said, well, sure. I love to write and you know, he needs a book written. Why not? So my first client was October, 2019. And as I started throwing the idea out there on social media that, hey, I'm a ghostwriter. For those of you that have a story that needs to get out, um, I love writing. I can sit down and do it all day. Uh, literally just putting out a few posts, I just started seeing the Lord send clients one after the other. So by the end of May, I would have written uh, four books 
for other people since October. Wow. <laughs> yes. And I really feel like it's part of my calling. I'm helping someone get uh, a voice behind their story. Um, I'm helping someone share their testimony. Uh, and they may feel like, hey, writing is just not for me, but I do know that I have a story that needs to be told. And I feel like God is actually using me to help people write their stories. So I do that, but I also do book coaching, which is more for people who say, hey, I do want to write my own book, but I just need someone to kind of mentor me through the process. That is really neat. Well, so as you're going through, like you have so many different things that you're involved in and you just have said that you feel like God has directed you to these passions and these things that are really callings. How would you speak to someone who is struggling to find their calling and maybe torn, maybe not knowing how to hear God's voice? Because it's so hard to discern sometimes our own thoughts, our own wants, right. and God's voice. Like what, what advice yeah. have, would you give someone? How have you navigated that in your own callings? Sure. I would say pay attention to not just the things you enjoy, but pay attention to the things that actually bother you. So sometimes we're like, oh, I love decorating. Maybe God wants me to be an interior designer. And that may be true, but think about the things that bother you. I have a friend who is absolutely bothered by homelessness here in Charlotte. I mean, most of us are not okay with homelessness, but I mean, it literally keeps her up at night. Mm. She drives by um, a homeless person and she has to stop. She has to see how she can help. You know, and most of us, we kind of maybe we'll pray on the way while we're driving past them, or we may stop, but it's not every time, you know, and she said that homelessness in Charlotte bothered her so much that uh, one of her friends said to her, you probably should pray about that because maybe there's a reason why God's allowing it to bother you more than the average person. So I would say sometimes when you're looking for your calling, you should actually Pay attention to the things that bother you and that keep you up at night. I mean, it bothers me when I think about children who don't have access to uh, an education. It bothers me when I hear stories of women in certain West African countries that are denied an education because uh, their families say, hey, we can't afford to send everyone to school, so we'll send the boys and you don't need to worry about an education. Or because they become widows, society says, hey, you know, you're going to be shunned. I mean, it bothers me. I think about it so many times a day, every day. Um, so it wasn't even a matter of everything that I enjoyed doing was my calling. I found that a lot of the things that uh, bothered me that I felt like, why isn't somebody doing something about this? Mm -hmm. Those were the very things that God was like, well, you know, it's coming to your attention because I want you to do something about it. I love that. And you know, and that's the powerful thing about prayer and action. It, you know, it can take these anxieties and, you know, because this world is a fallen place. It is hard right. to walk sometimes seeing what we see and to be able to take those just, just the frustrations about injustice or our anxieties about things that we can't change or feel like we can't change or wish somebody would change. Um, right and turn those into powerful prayers. And then just to see the fruit of action come out of those prayers, that is really such a gift from God. Yeah. So no, that is great advice. I, I think that's something that somebody today really needs to hear. Mm -hmm. So you talked about mygracedavid.com. So that's where we can go and find out more about your work um, with the body scrubs and that can go toward helping with the education of people in West Africa. Um, right. And where, what is your personal website that has information about some of the things that you're doing? Yes. So that website is jenmwatson.com. All right. Well, we are going to link to all of that on our show notes and make sure that everybody knows where to find you. But, and, um, and also BCI, if you're interested, Black Christian Influencers, they're on Instagram, they're online at, I think it's, is it blackchristianinfluencers.com? Yes. I, yes. Um, so yeah, just a great organization and I love following them. It's, um, and yeah, if you want to check in now, are your 
Instagram on Instagram. Is it on Instagram stories that you do the prayer meetings or how is that? Accessed? Yes. So on the black Christian influencers, Instagram, I'm on Wednesdays at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, yes, if you're uh, following them, you know, you'll get that little notification when we're live. But yes, we also do archive them in our stories. So someone can always go back and, you know, tune in that way. Perfect. Well, that is so exciting. And so how can we be praying for you? Just, um, I'm going to close with prayer, but I would love to be praying for you. However you, you know, personal, professional, mm -hmm. spiritual, whatever, how can we pray for you? Yeah. Uh, I, well, one thing that's really, um, on my mind lately is just the Nigeria missions. They are, don't, they're not always running as smoothly as, uh, the Liberia missions, uh, were and then with the introduction of this COVID outbreak and even Nigeria is suffering um, from that tremendously, like many of us are in the United States, um, it's halted certain things. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to remain um, consistent and faithful because you know a lot of times when things start to really look opposite to what God has already said, because we're human, we can have moments where we say, oh, "Man, maybe." maybe I shouldn't press forward, yeah. but I think this is actually the time for me to really dig in and um, hunker down and, and, and push forward, but certainly praying that the doors continue to open and that I would just, you know, stay, stay the course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you have a vision for expanding further or are you just kind of waiting right now and doing what you're doing well and just see what happens later? Or do you have kind of long-term plans to expand you know, if I had any long-term plans, Jamie, it would be, I would love to see Grace David operate in Nigeria. So wow. the short term is, you know, using these proceeds to help women start a small business or help them send their children to school. But long-term, I'd love to say we have a branch in Nigeria. If there's someone who needs a place of employment immediately, you know, here we are. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a big dream, but it's definitely something that has crossed my mind more than once. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Well, it was so good talking to you, Jen. Thank you for being here and thank you for all that you're doing. Um, just the work that you're doing, all the things you got your hands in, God mm -hmm. is in those. I'm excited to hear how things progress. All right. Well, let's pray. Okay. God, we just thank you so much for this time together. Lord, I thank you for Jen. I just thank you for the insights that she was able to share just from how she's navigated finding some of the passions in her own life and this balance between prayer and action. We just lift up her ministries to you, God, and specifically the Nigeria missions right now, Lord. We just pray for open doors. We pray that where there are barriers right now, that you would just crush them in Jesus name, that you would open up the ways for them to get the things that they need to Nigeria. Lord, we pray your blessing over West Africa and all of Africa, all of the world during this COVID-19 outbreak. Um, God, we just pray your protection. We pray for your provision in every way. God, we pray that medical supplies would be gotten to where they need to be that people would be able to get treated, that um, diagnostic tools would be placed in the hands of those that need them to be able to curb the outbreak and prevent it from spreading. God, we just pray that you would guide and direct Jen, um, give her, just infuse her with hope and with energy and vision for what her next steps are. Lord, if, if there's a time to wait, then help her to know that. If there's a time to push forward with everything that she has, give her that, that uh, commission and just continue to push her forward in this ministry that you've placed on her heart. And Lord, I do pray that, that her idea, that seed of an idea to bring, um, to bring this ministry in country, that that would become a reality. God, you supply all of our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. You have all of the resources of the universe at your fingertips. I pray that you would provide Jen with everything that she needs 
to push forward in the ways that you have planned for this ministry to flourish and to thrive and to expand if that's your will. Um, and I just pray you would rain blessing down on her family, on her home, and, um, and just on her ministry and her work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.